Hello everyone, welcome to Innistrad Crimson Vow Spoilers Day 5 Review. We've got so many cars today, so I'm gonna be skipping some cars that are basically limited cards and leave some cars for tomorrow's review. And let's not waste time and go to our first card, Necro Duality. The 4 minute enchantment. Whenever a non-token zombie enters the battlefield under your control, create a token that's a copy of that creature. Okay. So this is... So this reminds me of Panharmonicon, which is both 4 mana. But one's an artifact and this is an enchantment, which... Um, artifact is easier to remove and... Panharmonicon triggers off of artifact as well but this is any non-zombie non-token zombie i mean it's not strictly better because necro duality is only for the zombie cards but for the zombies it is technically better because it creates a token that's a copy of the creature but as amazing the card effect is um other than the fact that it can create a bunch of zombies there's not really there's not a lot of remarkable zombies with enter the battles effect. I can maybe see this as like a sort of a combo piece with the Grey Merchant, which is the only enter the battlefield effect zombie card that's worth mentioning. I guess you could try comboing this with um, Asri, the Archlich, and using Ephemerate on it to complete the dungeon immediately. That could be something you could do, but it's still kind of janky. It, even if you complete this dungeon with that card, it's not like you won the game. As for standard, I guess you have Falcon Abomination and Organ Hoarder. There's really not that many zombies. I guess uh, what they're going for probably is just as like a value card. Just create a lot of zombies, just go wide. I think that's the only thing that I can think of in standard. We'll have to see if they print more zombies in the set that are powerful with this card. But as of now, it's um it's kind of slow. Okay, next card. Dreadfeast Demon. It's a 7 mana 6-6 six, six demon. That's flying. At the beginning of your end step, sacrifice a non-demon creature. If you do, create a token that's a copy of Dreadfeast Demon. Oh. So the turn you play this you can create a token that's a copy of itself. So on the following turn for your opponent, in order for them to actually remove this, they need to either bo one void wipe or have two removal spells that can kill a seven mana creature. It's definitely not bad, kind of insane. I like, I like that. I also like the fact that this flies. So it can just go face if they don't have an answer for both of them. They're either taking 12 to the air or six. And it's it keeps multiplying, right? Um, so you could play something like um, Eye Twitch in standard or um, Shambling Ghast. Or if your deck has something like Sedgemore Witch to create some uh, tokens to use those creatures as a sacrifice or even decay zombies from Tainted Adversary. If I were to be playing this card, it would be in a shell kind of like that. I can generate tokens that you can use to sacrifice to this, this card. Um, it also could be a pretty good reanimate target in standard. I mean, I'm definitely going to try this card. This card seems a lot of fun, um, even if it does lose the turns deck, but as for historic, there's definitely better reanimated targets out there, like Sarah's Emissary, so that's a no-go. Uh, next card, Lantern Flare. Two mana instant, rare. Lantern Flare deals X damage to target creature or planeswalker and you gain X life. X is the number of creatures you control. And you can pay the cleave cost and pay the X amount with a red and a white to deal X damage. 
if you have two creatures this deal two damage for two mana if you have and in order for you to pay the cleave cost you need to pay four that's a lot so unless you went first opponent could play if your opponent goes first and they play luminar gasprin and you play the creature on turn one on your turn yeah you can't lantern flare to kill the luminar gasprin because if luminar gasprin puts a counter on itself it's now a 2-2 and on your turn you only have one creature and lantern flare only does one damage this card is absolutely terrible and in order, order for you to do, deal two damage without the creatures you need to pay four mana at that point at that point why aren't you just playing um you could just be playing sacred fire which is probably better because it deals two damage and it also has flashback even though it's a little bit over costed and at the same time no nobody plays kabira's takedown so i'm pretty sure this card is not going to be played next card curse of hospitality a three million enchantment aura is a curse uh, enchanted player creatures attacking enchanted player have trample whenever a creature deals combat damage to enchanted player that player exiles a top card of your library until end of turn that creature's controller may play that card and they may spend mana as though it were any mana cast that spell i mean it's a really powerful effect really powerful effect which basically lets you attack freely even if they even if you get a one for one trade since technically you are getting the card advantage it's not even a one for one it's a two for one does it allow you to play any card until the end of turn that player may play that card you can even play land this card is sweet the only downside of this card is um basically if you top deck this card while you don't have a board then it's pretty bad but other than that this card is pretty sweet um might see it as like a sideboard card i don't know if it's main deckable it might be actually really good against control decks okay next card alpax piper the four mana human werewolf this spell cannot be countered oh four mana two two four mana two two though a2 tap itself you may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield if the wolf or well wolf werewolf untap itself activate only as a sorcery it also has a daybound nightbound mechanic let's take a look at what it transforms to it becomes a 4-4 four, four. whenever this creature enters the battlefield or transforms into a wild song howler Look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest at the bottom of your library in any order. If you can somehow abuse Nightbound and the battle mechanic, 4 mana 4-4 four, four is not bad. And it also has an ETB trigger that allows you to get some cards that way. Hmm. Definitely not bad. But if it's day and you play this, obviously 4 mana 2-2 two, two isn't very good. And it's... I don't think you can pay 4 mana to play a 2-2. Two, two, unless it has a very, very big payoff. I guess what you can, what you can do is uh, you can pay 2 and tap itself to... And your deck probably has to play um, some big creatures with this. And we have Tovalar which fulfills that role um since tovalar is a werewolf when you put tovalar into battlefield it'll untap the howl pack piper and it'll allow you to put another creature card from your hand onto the battlefield kind of janky but powerful i think a lot of people will definitely try this it might be really good against uh, zorius control since the fact that this this card can't be countered and it's not like the toughness really matters against Zorius control could be played as a cyborg card to um, put big creatures on the play without without it being countered right next card 
Cemetery Owler. It's a 3 mana 3 4 wolf. Vigilance. Whenever Cemetery Prowler enters the battlefield or attacks, exile a card from a graveyard. Spells you control. Spells you cast cost one less to cast for each card type they share with cards exiled with Cemetery Prowler. Let's see. I mean, it's, it seems like a really good card. 3 mana 3 4 Vigilance is premium stats, I think. Or the keyword and the stats or that cost but in standard it's competing with briar bridge tracker you also have old growth troll and primal adversary right is this better than those three uh i don't think so so i don't think this card is going to be played in that kind of shell but it has potential. I think this card it has a combo potential. Maybe some kind of like a storm deck in Historic with artifacts. Where you exile an artifact with this card. Then your artifacts cost either 0 or 1. And I don't know, you, you could play like, you could flood out your hand and possibly like storm off. It's a, it's, yeah, it's a cool card. Uh, next card. A Braid and Syncopate. Both are really good reprints. A Braid is 2 mana instant speed. Choose 1, deal 3 damage to target creature, and or you can choose to destroy target artifact. Very, very good sideboard card. Usually don't play this in main board, but unless the format is really artifact heavy, but usually that's not the case. But this is a really good card. Let's you destroy artifact, deal 3 damage to any creature that you want. Very flexible card. Obviously, single paid is also a really good reprint. Let you counter any spells, whether it be creatures or non-creature spells, and they become exiled. Let's see. Cultivator Colossus. 7 mana. Plant Beast. Trample. Cultivator Colossus' power and toughness are each equal to the number of lands you control. When it enters the battlefield, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. If you do, draw a card and repeat this process. It's a pretty cool card that lets you go through your deck until you stop flooding for your next turn. But not going to be played even in Reanimator. Because Standard already has better Reanimator targets such as Tovalar's Huntmaster and Coma. Next card. Inspired Idea. 3 mana sorcery. Draw 3. Your maximum hand size is, is reduced by 3 for the rest of the game. And you can cleave that down uh, downside with 5 ping 5 mana. Wow. Okay, cool card, but... It's not gonna be played. It's also really cute. So, I guess this, uh, this scientist in the picture is kind of like a... Someone who's trying to like reanimate creatures, like I, th I think I've seen in some other arts, some other cards, and the guy is like just trying to like stitch things together and then make it into an abomination or whatever, like kind of like Frankenstein. So I guess the idea is that by reducing your hand size, you can discard the reanimator targets into the graveyard. But here's why this card is absolutely terrible. <laughs> you don't always want to dump your hand to the discard pile. Because sometimes you want to hard cast things if they happen to have graveyard hate. And sometimes you want to hold on to cards. If you keep forcing yourself to discard every single turn because your hand size is so small, you run out of choices and answers for your opponent's board. And your play becomes very predictable for your opponent. So overall, really dislike this card. Not to mention, if you want to avoid the downside, after reducing your hand size, you have to pay 5. Which is a lot. And if you don't, then you have to reduce your hand size again. You can only hold one card per turn. <laughs> yeah, this card, is, this card is absolutely bad. Okay, next card. Ascendant Pack Leader. 
one mana two one whoa finally we might have a card remember when i said wizards never print good one drops anymore well let's see if that trend continues um ascendant pack leader enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it if you control a permanent with mana value four or greater okay whenever you cast a spell with mana value 4 or greater put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on itself. So in standard, you have chariot, which is a 4 mana value. But if you have a chariot on the play, this comes in as a 3-2. Or if you play this on turn 1 and you happen to play chariot, this becomes a 3-2. So this card's this card's just good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh next card. Wrath. Or bear. Oh, finally a vampire. Three mana, three one. Three mana, three one. For a flying creature, it can't block. Not looking good. <laughs> it's already not looking good. Uh, whenever it deals combat damage to a player, create a blood token. Pay one black. Sacrifice two blood tokens. Return itself from the graveyard to the battlefield. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. This card's okay. Yeah. This is a really good recursive threat. I like this card. So I need to see a bit more blood token generators. But this card, if blood token generators are powerful and efficient, this card is gonna be really good. It's gonna be really powerful, and it, it has a really good synergy with blood tokens. So blood tokens can discard Vulcan Wrath Forebear, and you can use the blood tokens to bring this card back for one mana i think this card might see even play in historic as well if blood tokens are a thing because and you might even play faithless looting in that shell because faithless looting is just one mana discard and oh will vampires play fiery temper oh kind of like a semi madness maybe that could be a thing because now you got this card to discard you got Fiery Temper. Maybe we'll have more. Also, because we play Olivia, we are going to be playing Olivia now. It's not really that bad of a deal if you put creatures into the graveyard. This is looking to be like kind of like a discardy vampire reanimator slash deck. That could be a thing in the historic. And we got a last card here, which is Hamlet Vanguard. 3 mana 1-1 one, one, human. 3 mana 1-1 one, one, human warrior. As a ward 2. As in pay 2. If they want to target this. Enter the battlefield with 2 counters on it. For each other non-token human, humans you control. So if you don't have a board. This is a 3 mana 1-1. One, one, which is an incredibly bad top deck. And for that reason I don't think this card will see play. I'm sure human decks won't really miss this card because they have enough three drops. So yeah. And that about wraps it up today. There's a lot of jank potentials with some of these cards introduced today. I really like the introduction of Falcon Wrath Forebear. And could be one of the top cards of the set if blood token generators are more efficient. And for jankiness side, I really like Dread Beast Demon. So we'll have to see how the rest of the set goes. But anyways, if you like the video, leave a like and a comment. And if you haven't subscribed, I really appreciate it if you did. I'll see you guys later for another episode of Crenzum Vow Spoilers Review.